Hello, my name is Fox and you're watching Den of Fools. Let's jump right in. The Beachhead Brawl took place in Bournemouth, UK from the 9th to the 11th of February 2024. The tournament had six rounds with 160 players and 900 games played. Martin Cooper won the tournament with their Astra Militarum. JC Rom and their Dark Angels came second, with Liam Calibo also winning Dark Angels in third. Big congratulations to all these players and apologies for the poor pronunciation of their names. The winning Astra Militarum list focused mainly on infantry with character support. First of all, we have Gaunt's Ghost, which are very useful for objectives. They have low operative and stealth, which makes them rather hard to remove, and they have a 5 plus symbol if you can get close enough to shoot them. They have infiltrators as well, which allows you to set them up in the midfield to get early pressure on objectives. If this wasn't enough, they have the same ability as the Caldus Assassin, which allows them to be removed from the battlefield at the end of your opponent's turn and go into strategic reserve. Due to their maneuverability and difficulty to take down, I would imagine most top guard lists will take them. They do dish out a little bit of range damage, and they have fights first in case they are charged, but I would imagine they were kept out of danger as much as possible. Next for characters we have Lord Solar Leontis as the Warlord. He gives you a CP at the start of the command phase if they are on the battlefield, which is an all round useful ability. He also allows you to redeploy three units after both players have deployed, including placing your units in strategic reserves. He can give out the most orders of any guard officer with three, and can be attached to a wide variety of squads. It is hard to say whether he attached to the Katachans, Krieg or Kazakin, but considering Creed's buffs, I would guess she was attached to the Kazakin. If anyone knows which unit they led, please let me know in the comments. They can dish out some decent damage in melee, making 6 attacks with Conquest, hitting on 2s at strength 6, AP2 and damage 2. The horse also makes 2 extra attacks, hitting on 4s at strength 4 and damage 1. His melee damage would make him a nice bonus to a Katachan squad when they charge in, but considering he is more valuable alive for orders and CP generation, I would guess he was attached to the hardier Krieg squad. Although both types of infantry have the same profile of a 6 inch move with toughness 3 and a 5 plus save, the Medipack which allows you to restore D3 models definitely gives the Krieg a slight edge in terms of toughness. They are also better at range with reroll ones to hit and reroll ones to wound as well, if below half strength. This will pair nicely with Leontis' pistol, which makes 2 attacks at 12 inches, hitting on 2s at strength 8, AP2 and damage 2. The next character unit is a simple platoon command squad. They can give out a single order, and they allow friendly platoon units within 6 inches to use stratagems even when battle shocked. I'd imagine they ran up the field with the Katachan, leading one of the squads. The Vox allows them to give their order out to 24 inches, while the Medipack gives the unit a 6 plus field no pain. The squad's heavy weapon team takes a mortar, while the commander has some additional melee punch with a power fist. We have a single tank commander with a demolisher battle cannon, which makes D6 plus 3 shots out of 24 inches with blast. They hit on 4s at strength 14, AP3 and D6 damage, with some nice anti-tank shooting. The tank is also equipped with a last cannon and two multi-melters to further amp up the anti-tank firepower. They can give out one order to squadron units, which does include the Rogal Dawn battle tank. I would imagine these tanks stay together so the commander can give orders to the Dawn, although it only has to remain within 12 inches. It also has a shooting death ability on a 2 plus, which is quite nice as it packs some pretty deadly firepower. Finally for HQs we have Ursa the Creed. As stated, I imagine they led the Kazakh in, as their abilities allow the unit to benefit from two orders at the same time, and they have the Captain-esque free stratagem ability. For me, these are far more useful on the Kazakh in than the Katachan or Krieg, which is why I think they led that squad. Speaking of Kazakh in, they have the ability to be affected by an order in your command phase until your next one. This is in addition to any other orders given, so I believe with Krieg you can have three orders active on them at the same time. The Melter Mine can dish out some mortal wounds with D3 on a 2 plus or 2 D3 if it's a vehicle. They have some decent firepower with their AP1 hotshot las guns, melters, and plasmas. The Vox Caster also allows them the chance to recover a CP on a 5 plus when a stratagem is used on them, which I would imagine was every turn if they were led by Krieg. For example, they can use the 2 CP Fields of Fire stratagem for free, which allows all your units to get an extra AP minus 1 if your unit isn't battle shocked. As mentioned, we have four squads of Katachan jungle fighters. They have Scout 6 inch, which gives you some good early game maneuverability, and if they charge, they get an additional strength and AP for their attacks. This means the squads will be making 10 attacks each, hitting on 4s at strength 4, AP 1, and damage 1. Not bad for a very cheap 55 point unit. We have the aforementioned Krieg, and then we have a single Basilisk. The Earthshaker cannon makes D6 plus 3 shots with blast, heavy, and indirect out to a ridiculous 240 inches. I know they are always in range in your standard 2k points game, but personally, I like that they leave in the massive ranges for other game types, such as big apocalypse games. The gun hits on 4s, with strength 8, AP2 and damage 2, 
which is a good profile for Marines. You can select one unit hit by the cannon, and remove two inches from their movement, advance and charge rolls, which is very useful if the enemy has a key melee unit you want to slow down. We then have three squads of Bulgarian. They move and have a toughness of six, with a four plus save, three wounds and a six plus feel no pain. This makes them reasonably tanky for the cost, and they have minus one damage as well for good measure. If that wasn't enough durability, they all take the brute shields for a four plus invul. They're also decent in melee, making four attacks each with the mauls, hitting on freeze at strength 7, AP 1 and damage 2. With all this combined, they are one of the best objective holders for guard in my opinion. We then have three Medusa battle batteries. Even after multiple nerfs, they are still very popular. They make D6 attacks out of 36 inches with blast, heavy and indirect, hitting on fires at strength 10, AP 3 and damage 3. Even though they are reasonably expensive at 110 points a battery, the shooting is very nice for a direct. Finally, we have the Rogue Dawn Battle Tank and the Allied Cardis Assassin. As mentioned, the Cardis has the ability to go off the board at the end of the turn, and they can make one enemy battle tactic stratagem cost one more CP for the rest of the game, particularly useful on the command point reroll. The Rogue Dawn has a gun for pretty much every situation, and is reasonably hard to take down at toughness 12, a 2 plus save with 18 wounds. Once per game, you can change the damage characteristic of an attack to zero, which is nice against highest damage weapons. The second place Dark Angel's list takes the Iron Storm's Bearhead to buff the plethora of vehicles it takes. The detachment allows you to reroll one hit, wound, and damage roll for a model in each of your units once per phase. This is a very useful ability on the big anti tank shots, especially the ones that do D6 damage. The army is led by Azrael himself, who generates a CP in your command phase. He also gives the unit he is leading sustained hits one, and the Lion's Helm gives the unit a 4 plus invul. Once per game, you can summon a Watcher in the Dark to give a unit a 4 plus feel no pain to mortal wounds. To add to this, they have good melee with the Sword of Secrets, making 6 attacks, hitting on 2s at strength 6, AP 4, and 2 damage with devastating wounds. At range, he makes 2 attacks at strength 8, AP 3, and damage 2, with anti infantry 4 plus, devastating wounds, and rapid fire 1. This pairs very nicely with the Stern Guard's combi weapons, which have the same ability as Azrael's range weapon, but with strength 4, no AP, and 1 damage. This unit can dish out some significant punishment to infantry, with 50% of your wound rolls on average causing a devastating wound. We then have three more HQs, mainly to carry enhancements. The Lieutenant is very useful for objectives, as he has slow operative, and the Master of Machine War enhancement is quite nice. It gives a 6 inch aura that allows your vehicles to shoot when they advance or fell back. With so many vehicles included, it is not surprising we see two Tech Marines to heal the vehicles, as well as giving one plus one to hit. They also get low and operative when within 3 inches of a friendly vehicle, which means you don't have to worry about them being sniped. The first one has the Augury Web, which gives units within 6 inch lethal hits a very nice bonus. The Adept of the Omnissiah allows you to change the damage to 0 when a friendly vehicle within 6 inch fails to save once per battle round. With all these buffs overlapping, I can see why the rest of the list is mainly made up of vehicles. We do have some scouts and infiltrators to help with objectives, followed by the armour. We start off with two Gladiator Lancers. Their ability is a repeat of the Detachment ability, which works very nicely with the two-shot Laser Destroyer, which hits on freeze with Heavy at strength 14, AP 4 and D6 plus 3 damage. We then have two Redemptors with the Macro Plasmas. Even at a 10-point increase, they are still the most favoured of the Primaris Dreads. The minus 1 damage is a very nice durability boost for their profile, of toughness 10, a 2 plus save and 12 wounds. The Macro Plasma makes D6 plus 1 shots out to 36 inches, hitting on freeze at strength 9, AP 4 and damage 3 on the supercharged profile. Considering the tech marines will be constantly healing the dreads, I would imagine they overcharge the plasma on most occasions. We then have the only other Dark Angels unit, the Dark Shroud. It has a quick movement of 14 inches, with toughness 8, a 3 plus 7, 5 plus invul with 10 wounds. It gives all friendly units within 6 inches stealth and the benefit of cover against range attacks. This is a very useful ability to make the already durable armour even harder to take down. Even though it doesn't really deal a lot of damage itself, the mobility and its aura are very nice for its 115 points. For more quick moving flyers we have the Thunder Strike. It has the same profile as the Dark Shroud, with one more toughness and wounds, but without the 5 plus invul. After it shoots you can select one unit hit by the attack. The rest of your units have plus one to wound when shooting at it. Regardless of its own decent anti-tank fire, that ability is very useful for cracking the toughest of targets. Finally we have a single Storm Raven gunship. The Storm Raven is a unit which is not seen very often at all, so it's nice that her list is making it work. It has toughness 10 with a 3 plus save and 14 wounds, 
and minus one damage for added durability. It does chuck out some serious shooting with its missiles, plasmas and melters, and it will very much like the boss from the detachment, enhancements and the tech marines. It is hard to say what it transported, but it can transport 12 infantry and one dreadnought model. The third place Dark Angels list looks very similar to the previous one, emphasising what is strong at the moment. I would imagine we will see some more classic Dark Angels lists once their codex is fully released, but for the time being Azrael and the Dark Shroud are particularly good options. The exact same enhancements are taken, but this list has an additional tech marine. They take a squad of intercessors to help with objectives, as well as two squads of scouts. There is a company of heroes for Azrael to lead, followed by repeats of the Redemptors, Thunderstrike and Storm Raven. This list favours the Repulsor Executioner with a Macroplasma, as well as a Brutalist Dread for some charge threat. These lists of course rely on the Iron Storm Detachment and mainly Space Marine Codex units, meaning I am sure they could be adapted for most Space Marine armies. However, the buffs of Azrael and the Dark Shroud are quite useful. I would imagine the winning guard list beat this third place list as they simply had too much infantry for the low shot anti-tank weapons to take out. Unsurprisingly, the Space Marines are the most played faction with 20.63%, Netcons are in second with 9.38%, followed by Custodies in third on 7.50%. It takes our resident stats guru and Ultramarine fanboy Fearless Fox many hours to collect all the data. It would be great if you could show your appreciation by liking and sharing the video. It really helps us with the god algorithm of YouTube. We have grouped the win rates by colour with the key at the bottom of the screen. The 3000 Suns players top the win rates with an impressive 61.1%. The third most popular faction Custodies come next with a win rate of 55.7%, followed by the second most popular faction Necrons on 55.4%. The Orcs are the first faction in the Goldilocks zone with a win rate of 54.9%. Sisters and Demons come next, both on a win rate of 54.2%. The four Radmech players put in a very good showing with a win rate of 52.6% with the tournament winner Guard and the Gene Stealer Cults on a 50% win rate. The second and third place finisher Space Marines get a win rate of 46.7%. I think it is interesting to note the performance of Aldari and Chaos Space Marines, who are both below the Goldilocks zone, with a win rate of 42.4% and 40.9% respectively. The majority of the Chaos Warbands are unknown, with the Dark Angels leading the way for the Loyalists with a 72.4% win rate. This win rate is very high indeed. I would imagine it is being carried by the units and detachments we saw the second and third place finishers use. The Templars are still going strong with a win rate of 57.7%, with the Blood Angels on 51.9%. The Death Watch and Iron Hands are the last chapters in green, both getting a 50% win rate. The Salamanders are the only chapter in yellow with a win rate of 41.7%. The Ultramarines get a win rate of 35.3%, with the Space Wolves winning a third of their games. If you enjoyed our content please subscribe, check out one of the videos on screen and consider using our affiliate links in the description. Thank you for watching.